All right, now before we talk about what looked like one of the most compelling movies of the year, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take that next step in their creative journey. And no matter how much you know about something, there's always more to learn. Skillshare is there for you in that journey. Really creative endeavors like illustration, graphic design, photography, animation, creative writing, music, film and video, and so much more. As I always say, that's just the tip of the iceberg right there. And I appreciate the fact that since no two people's busy schedules are the same, Skillshare allows you to learn based around your own schedule. And I appreciate that they have the class interior design, interior decorate like a boss. Cause every time I think I make my place look awesome, people come in, they're like, yeah, the bachelor lives here, all right. Decorating your place to look like it has class, such an underrated talent. So click the link below because the first 1,000 of my subscribers to do so will get a free premium trial membership. And thank you once again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I do appreciate it. So The Green Knight's directed by David Lowry. It's a fantasy film starring Dev Patel, where, I mean, as seen in the trailer, this enigmatic Green Knight character shows up and he's like, hey, King, how about one of your knights fight me? And if he lands a blow on me, great. Dev Patel's like, I'll do it. He lobs off the Green Knight's head and the Green Knight's like, one year hence. So that's this movie. One year later, Dev Patel's character goes on his quest to find the Green Knight and make good on the promise and fulfill his end of the bargain. Now the Green Knight set in the world of King Arthur, Dev Patel's character in the story of the Green Knight is King Arthur's nephew. And I bring this up because if you didn't know that, if you didn't Google it, if you haven't run across that little factoid or tidbit, if you don't hear a YouTuber talking about it in a review for this movie, you wouldn't know by watching the movie. This movie could have really heavily relied on the King Arthur element to sell this movie a bit more. It could have had these really obvious winks, nods, and references in the movie, but it, it never does that. Succeed or fail, this movie chooses to stand on its own as its own story rather than lean really heavily on the more famous property it derives from. I respect that. Now, first of all, Dev Patel in this movie is great. We know he's a great actor, but you have to address it because we've all seen that movie where the great actor, you watch it and you're like, oh, okay, they were there for the paycheck. I get it. Though this movie is directed by the director of a ghost story. I don't think you team up with David Lowry to be like, hey, I need a really good paycheck today and that's why, like that's the sole reason. No, you probably team up with this director for the sake of taking part in the process of creating cinematic art. But Dev Patel was great because largely this is his movie. The movie's on his shoulders. Well, not just his shoulders. I would say that the world that we're traversing in this movie is a character in and of itself. And that to me, other than Dev Patel crushing it and letting you get into this world, the fact that you are in this world because of him. That's what you appreciate. It's an amazing fantasy world that you just, you appreciate going through with him. In terms of tone, practical effects, and CGI, it was the world of fantasy movies needs the Green Knight. It needs the Green Knight like back in 2001, the world of the fantasy genre needed Lord of the Rings. But I feel like the fantasy genre just kind of reverted to pre Lord of the Rings where it's like, all right, yeah, some of it's fine but it's never the apex, it's never the peak that Lord of the Rings was. Because Lord of the Rings is still the peak. I can see the comments right now, Game of Thrones, am I a joke to you? No, not until they passed George R. R. Martin's books and then most definitely us. One of the things I've always loved about the Lord of the Rings movies was the low key display of Gandalf's magic and other magic elements. So you get to the Hobbit, it's like, oh sweet, just CGI Gandalf magic. But in Lord of the Rings, it was much more subtle. The Green Knight brings it back to that. There's CGI, absolutely. But it's there to complement the practice practical effects. There's a lot of CGI, a lot of computer generated imagery in movies. I don't feel that sense of awe too often. But when the Green Knight can have these huge giants walking and I'm in awe like it's a set piece or something, that's pretty impressive. In terms of the fantasy tone in the Green Knight, when I was watching Strike That, <laughs> go back a little further when I saw the trailer, I had this thought and then in watching the movie, the thought remained. The fantasy tone in this movie should have been the tone in the Warcraft movie. Like when I heard, oh, Warcraft movie, it's gonna be like Lord of the Rings. This is the tone I thought of. At least the human elements. I like the orcs. The humans were boring as shit. I would still love to see a sequel to the Warcraft movie, but bring the tone back 
to something like this. I mean, it doesn't have to have the same pacing as this movie, but you know, atmosphere and tone, you know, make the world feel like this. And speaking of the pacing in this movie, yeah, I mean, just because you're a fantasy fan, maybe you're looking for something a little more fast paced. This movie really isn't that. If you're looking for the Battle of Helm's Deep or something, it's not in here. This is a slow burn character piece in which you're in this world, experiencing this world, experiencing this character's growth. The Green Knight on the fantasy end of the spectrum very much reminds me of Blade Runner 2049 on the sci-fi end of the spectrum. There is that connective tissue I felt while watching The Green Knight that I felt in Blade Runner 2049. Right, because in both cases, I cannot say these are anything less than well-crafted film. The world looks amazing, it feels amazing, you're living in it, the lead actor's crushing it the entire time, doing an amazing job. That said, I can't just pop in and be like, oh, I just, I don't know, some light watching. Feel like watching Blade Runner 2049 today. The Green Knight very much gives me that same feeling. That said, The Green Knight, I'm glad it's as good as the trailer made it look. The Green Knight's something in that fantasy genre I've just been craving for years. It's a slow burn, low fantasy, high fantasy hybrid that makes for a very unique and welcome cinematic experience. As much as I really enjoyed this movie, I can see it getting even better as time goes on, aging like a fine wine. But as for right now, I'm definitely getting this movie. I'm buying it on Blu-ray when it comes out. Also great musical score. Often I forget to talk about the musical score and it always pisses me off. I upload the video like, I forgot to, Damn it. So I'm making a point to do it here. I love the musical score. It had that fantasy flair to it. Sometimes it's haunting, but it never supersedes the movie. It always complements the scenery, the world, the moment you're in. All that's to say, I'm sure the vinyl soundtrack will come out for it and I would love to get it. Just sit there listening to it with my scotch brooding. It'll be fun. All right, so The Green Knight, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Whatever you thought, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more. <laughs>